This is Documentation Office Hours. It's the 9th of September. It's Asia time. And we've got two of us attending here. Let's, so agenda items, action items, Google Summer of Code, other tooling. And this is one we'll show a demonstration of this other tooling. Uh, then Jenkins 2361.1 released, 361.2 upcoming in October, DevOps World, Hacktoberfest, and that's it. Any other okay. topics you want to add, Meg? Nope. That should keep us busy for a while. Okay. So uh, action items, I've made no progress on the archiving or on the blog posts. It'll just have to wait. Given that DevOps World is coming and I'm full on focused there, that'll it'll be at least October or more likely November before I get there, before yeah. I get to uh, those action items. Google Summer of Code, though, this one's fun because in a, we saw from Vihan Thora the demonstration of the pipeline steps reference, and its coding is done. It's final, it's deployed, and it looks and loads really quite well. So when I search for checkout, oh, I it's find beautiful. it, and it loads lightning quick. And that's because the file is dramatically smaller because Vihan has separated things like this page into its own dedicated page. Aha. Uh -huh. Did and, he come up with the idea for this or did, was this something else that somebody else had known and he just implemented this, it? This is something that he actually proposed and reviewed with Chris and Whetstone. And, okay. and so they they came up with it together. Vihan implemented it. And he's he's the one who structured, who made some nice structural changes in addition. But I believe the concept of this partitioning and split came with a combination of him and Kristen working together. Fabulous. Yeah, very, very nice. So now in addition to that, now there is still, there's one page that's needing some work and I've got the action item to see if we can fix the plugin source code that's causing the problem. Uh, but it's, it's only one page. It's something about JSON, but I don't know that I need to show anything about it. It's there's a yeah, build steps from JSON plugin. This thing, when I click it, oh no, that, yes, there it is. Notice this thing in the top right hand corner. Ah, uh, yes. That hints that something went badly wrong. And notice that it's still loading the page. And the page is quite, quite huge. And, but Vihan indicated what's wrong is there is some misformatted HTML inside the page and the uh -huh. scanner thing can't handle that that badly formatted HTML. So, but we may be able to just fix the plugin that's contributing it. Right, and and if not, I mean, you're not left with total garbage for the page. Well, and and every other page loads very very fast and is very workable. So having one page that's not optimal, whereas before what we had was many many pages that were that size. Right. So. So very, 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 very nice enhancement. Vihan has nice done wonderful work. things. Exactly. So now to go to go one step further, we have this other concept on the site called extensions. Extensions are a Jenkins developer concept accessible through this extensions index. An extension point is a way for a a component in Jenkins to declare other people can connect to this and extend me. Okay. And so this tool, the extensions generator, uh, has existed for years and has been generating this page. Well, this page previously had 80 entries in it. Now, thanks to fixes from Basel Crow, it has a hundred plus. So there were many things that were just simply missing and, and really glaring kind of things like the Git client plugin is no longer missing. And okay. the Git plugin is no longer missing. So the, the, the other benefit of the work that Basel did is it also now has, instead of previously the one, over 1000 error message that is the tool was generating while it ran, 
<laughs> it's down to only 167, and those 167 are for are for truly ancient plugins. So Fabulous. we've got much more content, much better content, and special thanks to, to Basel for his work on it. So the here are the ones provided by Jenkins Core. It's it's really an amazing piece of work. Oh, that's lovely. Yes. Are you going to be able to cover that in your class at DevOps World? Uh, won't actually need to because of uh, this. This piece is not something that plugin maintainers or plugin yeah new new plugin maintainers even need to know. Oh, okay, so they don't a, need to this do is anything. a concept that they won't even have to have to handle yet. Oh, okay, cool. New page has. Uh, I think it's over 120 extension points. So big win there. Yeah. Next next topic is 2361.1 has released. It released on Wednesday. It was successful. And there was a, a, a live stream that Darren Pope and I did today. The recording is available here. Ah. And it it was an hour of us talking about this particular release. I'll have to watch it. Can it get better than you two talking for an hour? <laughs> well, we had fun. So we've got an upcoming, a new release, 2.361.2. Hello, Diraj. Welcome. Thanks for joining. Hey, Diraj. Hi, everyone. Thank you. All right. So the the release lead we've got Chris Stern who had joined us last week for for Doc's office hours who has expressed his willingness to be release lead again. Thanks to Chris, and we'll have a release coming out early in October. Now we get to the big ones. So these big ones, Meg, you remember that we've been going through this modernizing a plugin, and actually, Diraj, you've been involved in this as well. The modernizing a plugin. Um, tutorial and what we see is here's the let's see let's get the yeah here's the things that we've got so far 10 15 20 of them that we're preparing to show have merged in time for devops world at the end of september and that me will mean they're also ready for people who are new hacktoberfest contributors to use these tutorial steps to contribute to Jenkins in relevant and substantial ways with detailed steps that they can follow. Wow, fabulous. Awesome. Yeah, so it's it this one we've got several of us working through it and and the process is feeling more and more smooth all the time and it's a place where the documentation generation process we're using actually makes it quite elegant because most of the many chunks of this thing are boilerplate that get automatically inserted. So things like the branch name, things like um, this commit message, things like this file that's being added are all part of standard boilerplate so that we make a change to one place and all the pages get the update. Oh, yeah. So we've got 25 plugins that we've adopted as part of this tutorial, and we're going to modernize them, start the step so that when the students come to the workshop in, at DevOps World, we'll have the answers ready for them in case they can't solve the problem themselves. Oh, excellent. Yeah, so Here's that covered, that I... go ahead, Sorry. Diraj, what was that? Yes, so are all the steps completed on the Jenkins IO website or some of them are remaining? Oh, oh, there are many steps still to, still to be done. So for example, okay. what we've got right now is several of us are going through these, doing taking them on a test drive. So I've been through the add a Jenkins file, update parent palm, convert translations, uh, move the description, and update Jenkins version. So I've been through the first five or six one more time. And, and they, they have passed my most recent test, but the other, you see there, the other 10 or 15 still need to be run through. 
Oh, okay. And the content that is supposed to be there is already in that contributing to open source document, right? It is right. So the original, the original document, the the source document gave at least some rough outlines of how to do that. Hmm. Okay. Sure. So is there any volunteer yet that you know who is willing to work on this or are you only working on this by yourself? Oh, we've got several volunteers. So Kevin Martins has taken on being a, a documentation person who mm -hmm. test drives the instructions without being a Java programmer. And Bruno Verachten and John Mark Mason are both also reviewing it from the perspective of programmers. That's nice. It's good to know. Awesome. Yeah. So, so we feel, I feel like we're, we're on track to, to have something ready to publish by the time DevOps world reaches on the 26th or 25th of September. Okay. That's what I was expecting to like trying to know. So that's nice. Great. Yeah. So, and, and it, it feels right now it's, it's feeling pretty good. There's certainly lots of work to do because you can imagine with 25 plugins, um, every one of them needing some modernization steps, we're spending lots of time figuring out what those steps are and making sure they work. That means that it takes work to do that. So let's see, let's take an example here. Here's the MS build plugin and we see its source code here. The pull request is fixed. Now, if we look at the, let's see if I've got, no, I don't have any submitted here. So let's use instead one that I know I've done a submission for like badge. So here is the, the canned answer ready for the students in this repository. But when they work with it, they'll work with this repository and attempt the work themselves. So they try it, and if, if they're unable to solve it, we just change their URL slightly and tell them, hey, look here, you can find the answer. Oops. <laughs> it would help if I spelled correctly docs with there. I think with all this technology, they could figure out what you meant. No, 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 that would be just to, yeah, there we go. Uh so it's like the steps the students are supposed to do for a plugin has already been done on a separate repository for that same plugin. Correct. Yes, you understood it exactly. And uh, you, you only perform those steps. I mean, you only perform just one step, right? The updating the minimum Jenkins version or have you done for all the other steps as well? So we'll per, we hope to perform several steps. I don't think we're going to have enough time to perform all the steps, mm. but we hope to with 25, with 25 plus repositories, we hope to be, over the course of the next three weeks, perform at least one or two of the steps on every one of them. And of course the plugins are each at a different state in their modernization. Mm. One of them needed a Jenkins file. Okay, but before it could get a Jenkins file, it had to be able to compile with Java 11, which was a whole bunch of additional steps to be sure that it, so, so the first pull request of that one adds a Jenkins file and fixes the compilation on Java 11. Oh, okay. And are you doing this manually or automatically by some code? It's, it's done with human, human work, so manually. There's, okay. a, there's a tool called Open Rewrite that once we understand this well enough, we may be able to express the techniques using open rewrite, but we haven't, we haven't attempted that yet. And we won't for this exercise. Okay. Sounds great. Thanks. Uh -huh. oh. Any other, any other, oh, go ahead. No, I'm, well, I'm, I'm reading docs on the side while you guys are discussing that. Okay. Well, I think we're ready to switch then to let's talk about Hacktoberfest. Is that okay? Mm -hmm. Meg, any? All right. Yeah. So Hacktoberfest is coming October 1 through October 31. And the site has just been opened up. 
hacktoberfest.com. They show 17 days to launch. And it's new this year in that you will, you will register on their site to be part of Hacktoberfest. And they've got, now this one should bring joy to us. They've got a way for non-code contributions to be contributed towards Hacktoberfest. Oh. This, this is brand new for this year. It's never been done before. I'm not sure yet how well it's going to work. It's, it's still, we got to see what, what their rules are, et cetera, but very interesting concept. So this allows things like people who do translations from one language to another, even if they don't do it through submitted pull requests, can get credit for those translations. That's nice. Mm -hmm. So the challenge for us though, is, is this is the bigger picture challenge for the documentation team is we need to find a set of issues that are easily approachable. Well, let me, let me put a higher level first. What I think I've found is there are two key areas where we can do something with Hacktoberfest and do it well. But there is one where we've tried it in the past and it just didn't work. And so I'm this year recommending we intentionally avoid it. So two yeses and one no. Uh -huh. So the idea on the yeses are Jenkins.io. Those are, those are good yeses. We can, we can have people, we can identify issues on www.jenkins.io and create good first issues or label them so that people can come in and help us with that site. And submitting documentation to the site is, is not that difficult. So they can do that. Yes. In addition to that, we're, we want to label things Hacktoberfest that need some experience, but are still approachable for people with experience. So that means we've got to do reviews because right now, if we look at these lists, good first issues is tiny. It's got five items. And Hacktoberfest is tiny. It's only got four items where we've got 146 issues that are candidates. So we need to do a review. And the proposal here for today was in this session, let's review these and let's talk about which ones we think are good first issues and which ones we think are approachable for a new contributor if they've got Jenkins experience. So step one, next piece, and this is the second, yes, we think we should do it, but it's got some extra complications. The first one, Jenkins.io, we're the reviewers. So we absolutely can, can control how well and how frequently we review the pull requests. This next one, plugin documentation migration. So remember that plugin word means that we can't control because it's migration to the plugin repositories. Therefore, it needs the plugin maintainer. So this page shows us there are over 900 plugins that still need documentation migrated. Plenty of work to be done, but if we look at the plugins to be migrated, and let's sort by status, you'll see that most of them, how, I, I, the sort's not stable, unfortunately. Okay, so I can't, we'll just have to scroll. So that one is a large, larger number for the Allure Jenkins plugin. The Ansible plugin is larger. But most of them you see are in the less than 10,000 installations category. And so they may have no person maintaining them actively right now. And without a maintainer, it's, it could be very frustrating to a Hacktoberfest contributor to submit a pull request that never is reviewed and therefore won't be counted as a Hacktoberfest contribution. So the challenge with this particular task of plugin documentation migration is we need to find plugins where the authors are willing to review the pull requests. Now we've got a set. I, Go ahead. Yes. Uh, 
on the similar lines mark you created a excel sheet where you took permissions from those maintainers who are ready to look at, at those prs so what do you think about that excel sheet sorry so you, you were talking about an, a spreadsheet can, can you ask your question again yes. duraj sure sorry for that so you made an excel sheet last time where you took permissions from the plugin maintainers if they are ready to up, uh, review the prs from new contributors so what do you think about that we we may need to do that the problem is that was very time consuming and and the response rate was dismayingly low uh, so i i sent out requests to I think 30 or 40 plugin maintainers, and I believe I received responses from 10 or 15 and actual action on pull requests from maybe half that. So it, part of that for me is, yes, we can do this one, but I think our first choice would be to put them on uh, first choice uh, plugins that Mark, John Mark, and Bruno have adopted, right? Because those are plugins we know, uh, we know the reviews will happen. And then second choice, ask, ask maintainers. So as an example, here's a, and this here's a second one. choice is not a good one. It, it really, it, at least it wasn't last year. It didn't work as well as I'd hoped. So here's an example. Here's the Ansible plugin with 21,000 uh, installations and the work is listed as to do, but when we click Ansible here and go to GitHub, we read a pull request that was opened a year ago to move the documentation to GitHub but no maintainer and therefore a comment from somebody who's not a maintainer saying, hey, yes, uh, this looks good and a request to the maintainer, but no, no, no motion on fixing it. Yes, so this would be not a good experience for Hacktoberfest contributors. Exactly, you understood precisely. It's, it's frustrating for them, hey, I, I wrote something, I did something a year ago, it's still not been merged and no feedback on it to tell me why it's not been merged. Okay, I agree. Good, all right. So now, now on to the sort of the bad news side. These are tasks that we had tried to do in past Hacktoberfest events. And we actually had, had people take on the tasks and some of them have, have finally been merged. However, it's turned out to be much more difficult. So what we have is a notion of general documentation migration to GitHub. These are pages that are typically on the wiki and they're describing some capability of Jenkins, either a, a topic of this, this theme, agents, or that theme, system administration, or security, or permissions, or some, something, something like that, managing a Jenkins server better. And the challenge is when they copy it from the wiki and transform it, they aren't expert enough to clean up the mistakes that are in the wiki. <clears throat> and many of these wiki, wiki documents are five or 10 years old, and therefore they, they do have mistakes. And so what's that, what that's left us with is a, a large backlog of 10 of these wiki migration pull requests that are open, but they need experts to review them and make the corrections before we merge them. And we've just not seen the traction from the experts. Well, you can see we've got some back as old as 2019 that are still not merged. So my recommendation here is let's not 
ask anybody for Hacktoberfest to do general documentation migration. Let's focus ourselves on Jenkins.io. Makes sense. So then if the two of you are willing, and, and so Meg, did you have something you wanted to say there? Nope. I just created two new issues though. Oh, good. Very good. And are they good first issues? One definitely is. And the second one, I think, is, yeah, it's probably, it's a good one, first and a half. Okay. It's not so your five-year-old off the street to take on, but a writer would take it on. So malformed XREF. Oh, right See, there. Uh-huh. Good. Okay. Yeah, very good. All right. So. This one is absolutely a good first issue. Okay, good. Victory. And then review and rewrite the intro. Okay, so. Ah, okay, good. All right. I was so just, I was glancing and listening to you, so not reading, but I, that, that the, it looks like it's, it's still the prose from when we were all drinking the Kool-Aid, the blue ocean was the future of Jenkins right. and we put the disclaimer in and most of it kind of stands up <clears throat> but I know there's a section of what is it what happens to classic UI and we said well it's not we still love it it's not going to be buried in the backyard but you know so it would be it would be a writing task a pure writing task right right very good yes that's well and the new status is in the is already in the disclaimer here Right. All the, the goal is make it make the rest of the document consistent with the disclaimer. Right. Good. I like that. Very good. Okay. Um, so, are you are you okay? Last time we met together, we did this this same exercise. I'm just going to bring up my screen and let's look at these things and talk about them one at a time. Is that okay? Yep. Okay. So we um, had done screen one before. I, let's take. Oh, go ahead, Diraj. Yes, I have one topic that I want, like, want to discuss. If there's any time left later. So oh well, well let's take your, let's take your topic now then, because Hacktoberfest, okay. at least for me, I want to have it used all the time. That, yeah, we're going to run out the clock on it, so let's do yours. So what's okay. your topic, Diraj? So it's about the topic you and Basil were discussing about uh, backend extension indexer. Uh -huh. So I also link, uh, shared the link of the pull request in the chat. So I want my concern is to understand what is it doing and uh, how is it going to be related to the plugin help scoring project if there's any link. Okay, so the backend extension indexer is your question and you're asking how is backend extension indexer related to pipeline steps generator? Uh, not pipeline steps generated, but the project that I'm working on, GSOC. Like in oh, oh I see. Okay. All right. Got it. Because I got a comment from Herb Lemur, uh, if I pronounced his name correctly. So he messaged us on our project channel on Gitter sharing the link of this PR and mm -hmm. wondering if these would affect the plugin scores or not. So I came here to understand more on that. I see. Okay. All right. So, so then there are, there are two facets to it, right? So let's, uh, it, it might be that we want this to affect the plugin health score, but let's first, let me first give you an overview of what the back did. Let's see, were you here for the discussion about the, extensions concept no <laughs> okay so let me give you an overview of that that way you understand what this thing is and what it's doing okay so the the extension extension indexer um, takes the list of all jenkins plugins and extracts from them the implementations of things that jenkins calls extensions extensions are a way that one component can allow other components to add functionality to it. For example, the Git plugin may want to allow other people to add additional repository browsers or additional, um, 
let's see, what's additional ways of choosing particular builds. And so it implements that as an extension and then declares by creating a Java class that, hey, this thing is an extension other people can implement. And then other people implement it. And it can be interesting to know who implemented extensions for this thing. So let's look at the documentation to see what I'm, let me show it live to show you what I'm, I'm saying. So in the developer guide, this extensions index here is the is a, an index to all the extension points. And so extension points in Jenkins core and in individual plugins. Now, if we look at the one I just ex gave as an example, the Git plugin, we scroll down and here are the extension points defined in the Git plugin. So the build chooser here is implemented by, okay, the Git plugin implements several, but then the Garrett plugin, Garrett trigger plugin, the flaky test handler, and the alternative build chooser all implement that extension. So does this, does this help you see what's happening here? It's, this is a, an index into the extension points that are implemented in Jenkins. Yes. So it gives you uh, a uh, higher level view of what others have, I mean, how others have extended a particular Jenkins or a core functionality. Correct. Exactly right. Okay. Yeah. So, so yes. Yes, it makes sense. Thanks. Okay, and so so what what the challenge was is that prior to the work of Basel Crow, this list of extensions only had about eighty items in it. And what what had happened is over the years, the code that was generating this page had not kept up to date with current Jenkins development. And because it had fallen behind, it was not generating the list, an accurate list of all the extensions. So Basel fixed that. And now we see much more than 80 entries in the list because, because of his fixes. Oh, okay. So is this what that PR was about, about refreshing the component? It was. So what this did, what this pull request did was this brought in Basel's changes to fix this thing. And he describes it here in his text. He says, let's see, let's make this big enough to read. He says, there were previously 1,154 failures. Mark, your screen is stuck. Actually, I don't know. Oh, it is, is it for me? I don't know. Meg, can you see this screen? Is it updating? Yes, um, I'm sorry, I wasn't looking at it, but I can see it. Okay, so so Diraj, you may have to look at the recording afterwards. Sure, no problem at all. So what what Basel's what Basel's code change did is he implemented fixes for over a thousand previously existing failures. Now there are 300 failures that are still there. And there were 167 new that were added because they were really old plugins. And the, we looked at the list and the list of those plugins, they really are very old. So with, with that nice reduction, we got much better coverage here and good fixes, over a thousand, a thousand additional plugins are now being analyzed that were not being analyzed successfully before. So now back to your question, should, should this, could this potentially impact the plugin health score? I guess conceptually it could, right? Because if a plugin is failing this exercise, it's probably outdated enough that something's wrong with it. Does, does that answer your, does, do you understand my point, Diraj? Uh, a little bit. So are you referring to those 167 plugins? Yeah, well, to any plugin that fails to be processed by this tool, there's something probably 
amiss with that plugin. Let's, we could take an example. The anything goes formatter here is a plugin that has a, a failure, right? It somehow or other doesn't process. Now, if I look at that plugin, what I'll see, I suspect, is that it is ancient. Yes, so it has a Jenkins file, but it is depending on Jenkins 2.289. So that's about 60 version. Therefore, that's six months older than actually nine months or even 12 months older than the recommended version now. It's getting its documentation from the wiki, so that's not been changed. And, and so this thing probably is just badly out of date. It may not even compile with Java 11 yet. Okay. So its health score would be low. And, and it's yeah. possible you'd say, hey, failure in the extensions indexer might count against it in terms of plugin health score. But for me, that'd be that's that's a fairly advanced scoring thing. I think that would be a probe that we would delay for a very long time because that's much less important than many of the other things that are already on on the list for possible probes. Hmm. Okay. So, so if a probe, I mean, if a plugin fails for this probe, and since just I'm, I'm trying to understand more so if a plugin fails on this probe it uh, by this probe i mean this backend extension related probe mm -hmm. so that means that plugin is outdated in some way and by some way it could be like it does not have java version recommended java version or, or minimum base jenkins version or something like that so uh, it's an indicator that there are some pre-needed steps that needs to be updated. Something Correct. like that. Right. That's that's at least that's my initial assumption on it. Is if something is failing, the the backend extension indexer, then that likely means there's something about it that's out of date. Let's let's look. Let's get a first hint on the help here. Anything goes formatter. Original release was in 2012. Most recent release was just this last year. But with that kind of a gap, you can expect that there's probably not a, a lot of maintenance happening on this, on this plugin. Yes. Exactly. After a decade. Right, exactly. After 10 years without a release, Getting a new release probably was to fix some glaring problem, but not really to bring it up to, well, it's definitely not up to current. 4.33 should now be 4.47 or maybe 4.48. And 289.1 should be 2.332. So it's, it's at least, what is that, 60 versions out of date or 40, 40 versions out of date so two full LTS cycles out of date at least. Actually, it's three because there's 303, 319, 332, 346. So it's four. It's over a year old. I see. So I have one last question on this. So if backend extension indexer passes for a plugin, uh -huh. so can you tell me again what does this well, what does that mean for that plugin? It means that the plugin source code is well enough formed that the backend extension indexer can read the extension points from it. Hmm, okay, okay. So it's about being the code base updated. Correct. It's it's about the. I think it's about the code being modern enough. That it can be compiled with a modern, a modern environment. So by modern here, I mean Java 11, and and a recent Jenkins version. Hmm. So are those the only two points, or there are more? Oh, I'm sure there are more. I I don't know what okay. the others are. Usually, when when fixing something like that, 
it's it's a process of discovery to ex understand this is broken oh and this is how we fixed it this is broken and this is how we fixed it and i don't know all the all the problems by any means okay so for the problems which were only happening due to uh, java 8 being there so you would have updated it to 11 and then back end indexer would have generated the index points for that plugin right that's that's the hope right hmm. okay sure that makes sense so as per you this would be like an advanced probe which we need to explore later right much later correct this this is not this is not enough of an impact on a user to be nearly as important as things like our dependabot updates being used and processed our is the jenkins version reasonably current is the parent palm reasonably current um, is spot bugs not disabled you know is spot bugs allowed to run those kind of things are much more valuable i think for users Okay, sure. That makes sense. So I think that's it from this topic. I'll also go through this page that you have opened up uh, extensions index and try to understand more. So thanks for this intro. Yeah, although I wouldn't, Diraj, I would not worry much about considering this thing. It's it's such an advanced topic. I don't think we will get it into plugin health score for several years, probably. Oh, okay. I just don't, I don't see it, it being that informative to anyone. If something has a problem, okay, there was a problem. And it's, um, so the list that you were showing, it does not show all the plugins because not all of them have extension points defined within the repo, right? That's correct. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay. So. So for example, this plugin, Embeddable Build Status, is one that I maintain. It actually does have implementations of extension points, but Elastic Access plugin, another one I maintain, isn't in this list. It, it, Elastic Box is the closest thing to it. That's not it. And that's because it doesn't implement any extension points because it didn't need to. Hmm. Okay. So I see it's like, it's not a very general kind of probe. It's like very custom to related to a very specific set of plugins. Correct. Okay. Yeah. And that, that makes, that makes the, the probe even less interesting, at least mm. to me, because to say that, oh, you don't have any issues with extension points may mean mm -hmm. you don't have any issues because none are implemented. And if none are exactly. implemented, why should that be considered a plus or a minus? They're just not implemented. Hmm. Now, if it fails, that's that's that might be an interesting data point. But again, I think that's quite advanced. Yes, as you said, it's not something relevant from a user's perspective. Right. Exactly. Hmm. Yep, that makes sense. Great. Nothing else on this topic. Thanks a lot for explaining this all to me from basics. All right. Well, and if you want to look at at the when the recording is posted of Europe office hours from about 12 hours ago, I tried to give the similar explanation. So we'll get this recording posted and Europe office hours posted probably within the next 24 hours. And you could refer to them for more details on this concept of extension points. That sounds awesome. I'll definitely watch the recording. Thanks. Great. All right. So Meg, back to back to the, the issues. You have one more new issue. Oh, I do. Oh, good. Well, let's look at it. Okay. Architecting for scales. I can complain about any documentation. Good, good. Just yes. Give me a minute and an open window, you know. Okay, good. That, that section, the first thing is hardware recommendations, and then it talks about architecting for scale, which references hardware recommendations. So I think okay. those two should be in there. It needs to be edited through. I was sitting there half listening, and but there's some examples of some editorial changes. 
Okay. Yeah, let's so, see. It would have so, almost uh, been easier to open a PR and fix than to do this, but you're looking for good first issues. So okay. So what you were recommendation recommending was inside scaling issues, architecting for scale. Okay, good. So inside scaling issues. the architecting for scale section, which is this one that's second in the list right now. Should be before the hardware recommendations. I think. Interesting. Okay, now, and tell me more about that. I tend to think about hardware before I guess architecture even should precede hardware. Okay. Right. I I mean, go well, and I'll show you open archi architecting for scale. It's uh -huh. going to reference. It's sort of an introduction. In there, it's going to it's going to reference the hardware section. Okay, so agents, controllers. Right. Oh yes, right there. Okay. I mean, you're if you go into scaling for Jenkins, then to tell you what what you're architecting for, and one of that is hardware. Right, Obviously. and and I think that makes sense. Okay, so let's let's take that. Should be before hardware recommendations. Nope. It's the wrong link. Hardware recommendations. I mean, it's there on the left. If I'm looking for hardware recommendations, I can still get to it. Absolutely. I don't have to read architecting first, but if I read through an order, I should read architecting before hardware. Mm -hmm. That makes and sense. Then, and then I, they need to add it, but I, I found a few things there that I just marked. Good. Very good. I, okay, so. I had control C that link to put in here, and then I didn't put it in. Sorry All about right. that. No, that's great. So let's let's put. I think this one's good first issue because I think a, a novice could do this. Do you think that's yes. okay? Yes, absolutely. All right, good. Okay, shall we consider okay. Con, continue our quest for good first issues? Absolutely. Okay, yes. So so we we had reviewed page one. I'm going to actually jump to page three for now. Okay. So let's look at any of these that might feel like, hey, which one should we look deeper? Japanese translation would be good for somebody who's a native Japanese speaker. Yeah. Now, what would that mean? See, my <laughs> guess is... Yeah, this is proposing a full Japanese version of the site. And yeah, I'm, probably don't want to mark it, but yeah, I'm I'm not ready for that one yet. For me, that's so big, and we actually we don't have a place to put it. Ah, so okay. so right now we've got the Chinese site that is actually relatively unmaintained, and we've got the English site. Yeah. Now this one, manage global settings pages to the plugin tutorial. I'm not sure. Oh, no. Well, do we have? Go ahead. What was your question? So if we have a section on that in the main docs, that shouldn't be hard to insert that into. Yeah, the problem is no, this is this is fairly sophisticated stuff. Yeah, that's not a simple thing. Okay. So so I'm I mean, someone with strong Jenkins skills might be able to do this. So I might be willing to give it the Hacktoberfest label. I certainly wouldn't be willing to give it the good first. Nope. Never mind. Yeah. Okay. So I'm gonna I go was ahead. I was thinking if if there was but because some of because the tutorials in general should be somewhat duplicating information that's in the other in certain cases. So there right. might be a subject that's missing that you can say, here's your source material mm -hmm. and you know, extract an appropriate amount of that for the tutorial. Right. Oh, but this wasn't one of those. So I don't think so. No. Okay. However, let's look at this one. A user reported. This one I think is is reasonable to for a good first issue. So there's a the Groovy Hook Scripts page. They said, hey, it's using all uppercase the word hook. 
Uh -huh. when there are exactly two things that it could be, either a knit or boot failure. Okay. So why use something symbolic when you could just say hook could right. can be either init.groovy.d or bootfailure.groovy.d. Right. Good first issue? Yeah, I think so. Okay. All right. So now back to our main list. Don't you also want to add Hacktoberfest to it? We've been using we've been using them as disjoint sets. So good oh. first issue is is easy for a first time user and Hacktoberfest is you need to be an expert. You need to be skilled with Jenkins. We may we may have to do add the Hacktoberfest link to to good first issues, but we think good first issues stand alone right now is the choice. Mm. Right. Sure. Okay, let's keep going. Add manage. Okay, this one redirect the launching agent from console from wiki to the doc site is if we give the right description, it certainly is a good first issue. Right. So it is just a redirect after it has been. So, so if I open this page, no, it didn't. Okay, so it didn't go there. So it should redirect though to here. Yes. Okay, so the instructions say, this is not a page to migrate. Let's do an edit here. Page to redirect, redirect to the destination. And we don't need to do a terminology update. Wait a sec, but it says there is a 3511. No, he says that has to be done first. So nope, I'm not willing to do anything with the- What well, is 3511? Well, and yeah, it says it was merged. So it's okay. done. So it is done. So this one But that can, can be, be removed, actually. Yeah, there's no reason to put that dependency in there. Uh -uh. And this isn't actually making any textual changes. So we don't need to do a terminology update. This is inserting a redirect. And so we don't need the migration tutorial. They just need to send a PR to this particular file. Okay, well, well, where'd it go? What did I, ah, there it is. Send a PR, submit a PR. and see past PRs for examples. Do I need to include, probably good for the reader if I include a copy of a, a link to some previous PRs. Copy. Well, that didn't work. Jenkins info staging. That's nonsense. What page is that? Okay, so this this needs to the to the wiki to the wiki um, configuration file redirect configuration file. Okay, so um, needs needs that additional text. I'm gonna to dare to put the good first issue on it and remind myself that it needs more, needs triage. Okay, so that'll remind me to come back and look at it. We have run out of time on my clock. Um, anything else that we need to touch on before we close for the, for the day, Meg or Viraj? We have a Viraj? special, very quickie. Okay. I, I got mail that you're having a Gradle class the day before DevOps World. You're having Gradle training. Okay. If you skip to page four, we have 3689 and 3690 that are have plugin release page does not have Gradle equivalent. Might mark those at Hacktoberfest. 
and maybe somebody involved in the training would like to do those. Ah, okay. Um, so you could even ask the trainer to give a plug for it in the class for Oktoberfest, and the nifty T-shirt you could earn. All right, all good. Glory. Okay, so so this one, so I don't know how to do a release with Gradle. So that's an interesting one, and what you yeah, that's why that's been a is saying is this is easy to do. Yeah. Okay. Let's let's try. Wait a second. Dot. Yeah. Let's try it. Okay. Let's call it good first, and see if somebody's willing to take it on. Good. All right. And what was the other one you said? The there were two of them right together. There are two oh, great okay. ones. Oh, these these look like they're the same. Ah. Right. Aren't they? Both of them are saying on the. Document oh yeah, yeah. With okay. I thought one they were I thought they were different things, but yeah, we have the same issue too. I mean, yeah, forever we've had requests for example pipelines that included Gradle. Uh-huh. Should find out who's doing this Gradle class. Right. Yep. See if they'd like to join us for Hacktoberfest. Uh-huh. Anything else, Meg? Nope. Coolness. I'll, if I get a chance, I'll read some more. I'll see if I can file some more bugs for you. Great. All right. Thank you, Diraj. Thanks for joining as well. Everything going well Thank with you, so you Diraj? Yes, yes. Everything.